All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have Jonathan DePotter, who is the founder and CEO of The Hold Retreats. Jonathan, how you doing? I'm really well, Timothy. Thanks for having me. Uh, of course, man. Thanks for coming on, and we'd like to jump right in. So if you could start with telling us a little bit about yourself and what you like to do for fun, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm originally from, uh, from Hawaii, grew up there and uh, spent most of my life in the corporate world. Uh, one of the things that I uh, kind of has kind of, I guess, defined my journey in terms of uh, living the dream to link it a little bit to, um, to your great podcast name is um, kind of the transition that kind of uh, led me from atheism in the corporate world into more spiritual work uh, and ultimately launching, uh, launching Behold Retreats. Um, happy to dive a little bit deeper into elements of that, but in terms of, you know, things that I enjoy, things that I do for fun, you know, now these days I do a lot of, uh, a lot of meditation. That's something that I get a lot of joy and a lot of purpose from. There we go. Meditation. I, I'm asking now. I'm asking now. <laughs> I was, I was contemplating there for a second. Um, tell us a little bit about how you got started with meditation, uh, how you felt about it when you were starting out and how you've developed it over time to be something that you enjoy so much. Yeah, sure. Um, so I guess, you know, I come from actually quite, quite spiritual parents. You know, my mom meditated quite a bit when I was a child. Um, and so I went, you know, earlier in life very much in the other direction. Didn't believe there was anything there for us. Um, could not have convinced me to try it. And um, so it was ultimately, it was actually a, a first ayahuasca retreat in Peru that I attended five years ago. It was such a challenging experience for me. Uh, and at the end of that experience, they actually recommended, hey, you should probably try some meditation. So they actually handed me a, a sheet of paper at the end of the retreat and said, uh, you know, you should try a, something like this, a 10-day Vipassana retreat, uh, which is a silent meditation retreat, quite an intensive uh, meditation retreat. And then what was interesting was that over the, uh, probably the year that followed, I just had a number of other signposts that kind of pointed very much in the same direction, kind of try a, a silent meditation retreat. And so that was ultimately what kind of led me to listen. And, um, you know, again, that was a pretty challenging experience. 10 days, you know, sitting bolt upright uh, in a silent meditation hall, you know, four, four o'clock start to wake up so that you can arrive 4.30 in the meditation hall uh, and then you finish around, you know, 9 p.m. or so every night. So it's it's really intensive uh, as an experience. But I found that, you know, if I'm if I'm to be frank, like I found that to be super transformational in terms of uh, the experience itself, because you could just go really deep with yourself over the, the period of that 10 days. And so that was what kind of really uh, grounded my practice, I think, in terms of meditation. Um, and it's just become something that, you know, with time becomes easier and much more beneficial. Uh, I think it's a lot, it's one of those things where a lot of people struggle to get over the initial barrier, because it's, as we're starting, it just doesn't feel right, doesn't feel natural. Uh, and so we, you know, we can often say, oh, meditation doesn't work for me. But, you know, we very much encourage anyone listening to, um, to, uh, you know, persist, because the benefits really are there. There we go. I love it. And for you guys that were hearing that uh, screeching in the background, it is the birds mating season. Is that right, Jonathan? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I kind of like it. So we're just going to roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that's epic. I love that you uh, went on that silent meditation retreat. I've heard a bit about them. I haven't ever done one. I will say um, I read about this or I listened to a podcast about this seven days of darkness retreat where uh -huh. you're like by yourself seven days of darkness and i'm like that kind of seemed very intense as well but intriguing so yeah um i like meditation i like the idea of it but let's jump into a little bit more about you your story you said you were going to dive into it here's the time to do it yeah sure so um so i guess uh, you know, by any modern standard, I was, uh, quote unquote, living the dream in Hong Kong. Uh, I was leading a, mar a large team in management consulting there, team of about 100, 120, um, you know, doing large scale uh, technology delivery projects, as well as strategy work. And, you know, chasing the next promotion, chasing the next client, chasing the next deal. Um, and I guess I reached a point at which I no longer felt like there was much purpose in that, much joy. Uh, in that. And so that kind of began my search ultimately. And I decided at that time to year off. Uh, and I spent most of that year traveling through South America. 
Uh, and as part of that, actually, a, a friend of mine from South Africa um, came and joined me, and together we went on a, an, an ayahuasca retreat in uh, in Peru. Uh, and so that was for me a really you know pivotal and, and life changing experience. It was very challenging. You know, I wasn't very well prepared for the intensity of the experience, um, and I wasn't very well guided in the integration of the experience. Um, and you know, during the retreat itself very challenging it kind of opened opened the door to spirituality or, or kind of blew the door off the the hinges <laughs> to uh, to spirituality and um so that was you know kind of uh, i guess a trigger you might say to uh, doing a lot more of this type of work you know i attended quite a number of retreats over the years that follows doing my own uh, personal work kind of deepening my own practice uh, and ultimately what led me to launch Behold Retreats to uh, guide people who are motivated to explore this work uh, in a ways that uh, would help them avoid some of the mistakes that I made over the, uh, over the many years. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love that, man. And so would you say that's really your motivation, guiding people to avoid some of those mistakes? Absolutely. You know, um, one of the things that I uh, that I share with people is that, you know, if you go out there and you look at some of the retreat aggregator websites uh, for psychedelic retreats, right? So there's plenty with ayahuasca, with 5-MeO, DMT, psilocybin. What you find, which is universally the case, is that all of these retreats are rated as five stars. Um, and so I was attending a number of these, you know, leading, leading retreats. And, um, you know, if you went to Airbnb and you saw that everything was rated as five stars, you'd be like, okay, what's, what's the deal here? This thing isn't fulfilling its purpose because there, you know, make no mistake, there's an incredible uh, variability in the quality of work um, in this space that's being done. You know, this is some of the most complex work uh, that one might do. And so, you know, we're very much looking for uh, shamans. We're looking for healers who are experts in their ability to guide us through, um, you know, these uh, spiritual realms uh, in ways that will ultimately benefit us to improve quality of everyday life rather than just having, you know, a profound experience while, while on retreat. So, you know, on the basis that everyone's rating these retreats as five stars, you can kind of say that, you know, people are having positive experiences, which is great. Right. Um, but at the same time, there's positive experiences and then those that lead to immediate and near complete changes in uh, perhaps just about everything in life. And, you know, for, for a lot of people, whether or not they know it, that's, that's what they're looking for. I love that. And so did you say psychedelic retreats? Yeah. So all of the um, all of the retreats that we have at the moment are psychedelic in nature. We're also going to be launching shortly um, some uh, some preparatory retreats. There's a lot of people out there who are excited about entering, you know, participating in a in a psychedelic retreat. But first, they want a little bit more of a grounding. We good? Yeah. Sorry, I lost you there. Where did you lose me? Uh, first, they went a little bit more of a grounding. You were like in the middle of saying grounding. So you can just pick up there. Oh, oh yeah. So so people are um, often looking for a little bit more of a grounding in, uh, in the understanding of, you know, emotional work and mental work. So we're about to launch some preparatory retreats to help people really uh, develop their own understanding of self ahead of jumping into the psychedelic plant medicine retreats uh, kind of more directly. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, I love that. I was about to say psychedelic retreats make a lot of people a little anxious. So I'm glad that you guys have those kind of preparatory retreats. And um, yeah, that's really cool, man. I love it. Well, let's jump into your dreams and goals now. What is your vision for your life and your company? Yeah, so they're, they're broadly one and the same, which makes, uh, which makes life and work uh, quite quite straightforward. Um, you know, for us, it's really about elevating consciousness. So, you know, we define consciousness as the understanding of self and the understanding of the relationship between our inner world and the outer world um, and how we can further attune ourselves to understand, you know, the higher truths that uh, I guess transcend our rational understanding uh, of the, this 3D realm. And so, you know, I think that's why, you know, psychedelics these days are getting so much attention is because there's a lot there to really help people release uh, some of the mind orientation that we all have. 
Um, and, uh, you know, I think in the modern world, we've all become so busy and anxious uh, that a lot of people are looking for some relief uh, from over identification with the mind. And so uh, these plant medicines, these psychedelics can, you know, really help us elevate our own consciousness. And so it's not that uh, using psychedelics or using plant medicine is immediately a guarantee that you will elevate your consciousness, but when it's used with the right, you know, intentionality, the right uh, expert guidance and the right setting, then it can really, it can really deliver on those outcomes. And then, you know, once people have kind of opened up to these realms and began to develop their own understanding, then things like yoga, things like meditation can really serve as, you know, more sustainable foundations for continuing to do to do that work. So, you know, for me on an individual level, elevating consciousness is the big goal. Um, and then also in terms of, you know, helping others who, who hear the calling and are ready to do the hard work, uh, then that's what we help them with as well. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Just curious. Um, you hear about people having like psychedelic experiences without taking psychedelics. Mm -hmm. um, can you speak to that a little bit? Cause I'm completely ignorant on the topic. Yeah, sure. Um, and, you know, I think certainly meditation uh, or breath work, um, I think, are two modalities that can facilitate very similar sorts of um, psychedelic, you know, psych mystical, this is called the mystical uh, experiences, you know, experiences where our, we're much more connected to our higher selves, to spirit, and we feel this, you know, perhaps this feeling of oneness or interconnectivity of all things or universal love. There's many of these mystical experiences, which has been, you know, written about and spoken about through the millennia by virtually every tradition, you know, wisdom tradition or religion. So I think that's probably what uh, what what you're referring to. So I guess you know, in essence, what's happening in the brain is that uh, you're hitting a higher frequency, right? There's been some trigger. There's actually you might even I think it's I can't remember exactly the name of the receptor in the brain, but basically there's a trigger uh, the receptor in the brain that if if and as and when that's triggered, the the brain moves into a much higher uh, vibration. And so that is, in essence, you know, from a neurological perspective, uh, what's happening in the brain is that you're connecting up, you know, up into higher, a higher frequency, uh, higher vibration, a higher level of consciousness, and that's giving you this access to uh, reality in a, in a fundamentally different way, which then makes you know things like rationality and differences and debates that uh, often govern our everyday lives uh, in in the 3D, just far less consequential than we come you know can sometimes lead ourselves to believe yeah yeah absolutely i love that and i noticed you use some words that everybody might not be familiar with so like higher frequency higher vibration it's really like i think we all kind of know what it means but i think the like actual meaning of it also eludes some of us including myself so could you explain to us a little bit more about higher vibrations higher frequencies etc yeah yeah you know i think we we live in a very exciting time because there's there's really you, you can really feel that there's some convergence in relation to our understanding here um so you know i think the quantum physicists that are doing their work they've come to understand that actually everything has a base level of vibration right we understand that even if we pick up a lump of steel um that at the atomic level well, everything is in vibration. There is no real matter here in the hand as such. It is, uh, it is, you know, at, the, at that atomic level or at the quantum level, um, it's just, it's all in vibration. Um, and so, uh, you know, that, that is equally the case for us. And it's something that we inherently and fundamentally uh, understand, you know, if we go and hang out with one friend uh, and have a couple of drinks with them and they're just complaining about their girlfriend uh, as they did the last three times that we hung out with them. Well, that's pretty low frequency, right? And, and that begins to drag us, it can begin to drag us down a little bit to, to that level and to that frequency. And so we come out of that experience and we go, oh boy, I need to, you know, go to the gym and maybe run around the block and like get myself back into a better, a better energetic state, right? And so uh, by contrast, there's, you know, maybe we go to, I'm just going to use him as an example, but maybe we go to a Tony Robbins, um, you know, a Tony Robbins event for the weekend or something like that. And, you know, he jumps up on stage and starts yelling and shouting and there's this really transcendent, like, go, go, go type music. And, you know, perhaps we come out of that experience really fired up about life and our goal 
goals and how we're going to, you know, make $10 million the next year and yep. all of these sorts of things. Right. And so we, we've kind of got this new self-belief, this new frequency, this new vibration. And so, you know, I fundamentally, I think it, everything comes back to vibration, uh, whether we're talking about health, whether we're talking about consciousness, whether we're talking about um, the, the news and uh, the, the frequency of the, the things that are being uh, propagated out by the media. Uh, you know, you could just look at something and say, what is the energy that's sitting behind this? Whether we walk into a 7-Eleven and, you know, you look at the long rows of chips there. Uh, and is that like, is that, is that energy that is something that should be consumed or should you, you know, continue a little bit further down the road and hit up the fruit stand for, uh, for a nice smoothie? So, so, you know, I think we can begin to really look at anything from an energetic and a frequency um, perspective. Uh, and that is, you know, I think that's got untold benefits for us uh, on an individual level, but also as a, as a collective. I love that. I love that. And um, for those of you who, uh, you know, really want to dive into like vibrations, frequency, frequencies, um, law of attraction type stuff, there's a lot of literature on that. Napoleon Hill actually talks a lot about it in his books, Think and Grow Rich, and particularly the law of success, which is his larger book. Um, what really convinced me, cause I, I've been skeptical. I won't lie. I'm like, really stuff is vibrating. Like, what do you mean? I attract stuff to me. And then first off, when you think about it, like think about like the thoughts you have, the actions you have, it probably attracts the stuff that it would, um, that kind of vibrate on that same frequency, like low frequency attitudes attract low frequency outcomes, jobs, life events, et cetera, et cetera. So first you're already operating within it. Second, um, the way he kind of explained it to me was um, if you take like an iron rod or a lump of steel, like you said, and you can literally, you can literally vibrate it at different frequencies and um, it will change how we experience it. Mm -hmm. um, so like if you vibrate it at one frequency, it's like you can see it actually moving if you go much higher, it's like your eyes won't even be able to perceive it moving. It'll be vibrating so fast. And like between the like being able to see it moving and not being able to see it moving, it just gets hot. Like it gets red hot. It's vibrating. And then it's like, so it, based on how it is vibrating, it changes. And when you think about how life works with just like how heat energy is transferred and how all this energy is transferred, like it's all that vibration, that frequency, like light, light waves, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yeah, all of that is like energy and frequency. And what really sold me is he was talking about our thoughts and how our thoughts have um, that frequency. And that was the law of attraction thing. We send stuff out and then it comes back to us and it can only be received at something that's also at that frequency. And, um, what really sold me was when he was like, if you think about it, your thoughts can literally have changes in your body because um, yeah, thoughts make you angry. Anger makes you hot. And mm -hmm. like, literally I, I was convinced after that. I was like, I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I absolutely love what you've said there because um, you know, we've got a couple of healers on our team that are very advanced in terms of their spiritual progression and what you've described there in terms of the rod and vibrating it faster and faster is, is to a great degree, what happens to the human body you know when we we've again we've heard about this through the ages in terms of whether you know talk about jesus or whether we talk about buddha or we talk about you know enlightened tibetan monks high in the mountains or shamans deep in the jungle once people hit a certain vibration their body goes through a real change a real physiological change and um it even changes the density of the bone structure and everything like that and this is all you know outside of science uh, as it exists today but you know when i speak to some of the leading psychedelic scientists it's fascinating to recognize how far they have yet still to go to begin to open their eyes to um, the much deeper spiritual understanding that many of the healers and shamans, uh, you know, take, take as, take as given, uh, you know, with, uh, with the work that they do. And so I think we, again, we live in a very exciting time where there's this real culmination of knowledge, you know, ancient wisdom that's coming back into the modern um, kind of scientific paradigm that we find ourselves in and uh and there's so much there for us to gain 
in terms of our understanding to let go of all that fear, right? We've got so much trauma uh, in the collective, right? And, uh, you know, it's generations of colonialism, of war, of abuse within families. And it's, you know, we carry all that stuff around and it's all the shame, the guilt, the fear, the grief, the apathy, the anger, it's all in our energetic and, and physical bodies. Uh, and so, you know, again, these medicines, these experiences, meditation, breath work, these are all modalities that can help us much you know connect much deeper to ourselves and so what's happening as we're trying to raise our frequencies uh, up into these higher vibrational states to try and access the mystical realms is these dissonant energies these lower level frequencies all of the shame the guilt the fear all of that stuff is what comes to the surface and so that gives us this opportunity to face all of the things that we have within us that are limiting us because i truly believe that you know i think as as i think think and grow rich and napoleon hill does uh, more broadly we are truly you know we are limitless beings um but we have to be willing to let go of identity, of ego, of scarcity thinking, of victim mentality, savior mentality, perpetrator mentality, all of these sorts of dynamics that you know currently define um, the world that we live in. We have to be willing to let go of all of Of that so that we can see what we truly are and begin to you know limitless limitless potential to be realized for each of us in the way that we live our, our everyday lives yeah <laughs> dude i act absolutely love it <laughs> like it just it makes me so happy and if any of you guys are still skeptical after this whole 10 minutes first go re-listen to it but second just look up uh i think it's shaolin monks Mm -hmm. they do the wildest things like the the body changes that you were talking about jonathan like literally they're like poking holes in trees with their finger or like um, um able to control their body temperature and like a vat of boiling oil and stuff like that of just like things that we should not be able to do based on science that are happening because they can uh meditate like and mm -hmm. reach that level of consciousness and vibration so i'm sold is what i'm saying <laughs> it's exciting man i think once we all we all begin to tap into energetic potential right we are we are energy we are energetic beings and everything in the universe is the same energy and so what what you're pointing to there is those people who've been able to tap into that and so they're able to work with that energy in a way that is that is just inherent to our being. And so, you know, we've just been cut off from our higher selves. We've been cut off from these uh, skills. You know, some of the healers that we have on our team, I've seen them do things that are just so transcendent to my prior Newtonian 3D understanding of the world that it just, even thinking about it now, it just boggles the mind. You know, I think for to give one such example, um, you know, one of our healers can look at clouds and he can tell you exactly how they're going to unfold because he can actually see the energy that's happening around the clouds. Um, and, and so, you know, he, 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 and he can play with it, believe it or not. Uh, and I know that sounds wacky as wacky as anything, but once you've seen it, you know, once you've seen him consistently being able to pull very accurate information about clients that he's never met, uh, you, you kind of begin to, you know, put your, put your doubts to one side and say, okay, we're talking about the 30th or 40th client that we're speaking about. And he's giving very specific details with just a name. Uh, and he's, as far as I know, he's not bugged my phone. So yep. <laughs> it's like, wow, okay, this is, this is real, you know? So we're really, um, I don't know if you, you've probably heard of before, uh, the Akashic records, right? Which is this, uh, basically the compendium of all information of the universe uh you know through time that is that is stored and so you know i think you know napoleon hill does a good job of talking us about talking about ourselves as um you know being in reflection uh and so once we're vibrating at a sufficiently high frequency and when we have pure intentions in relation to our ability to use these powers then we're able to access uh, basically the collective database for the internet. So, you know, at that stage, Wikipedia begins to look like a little bit of a cute joke uh, relative to what what's humanly possible. But it's, uh, that's not, you know, these are not uh, powers that I have, but I, I certainly know people and a number of people who are able to tap into these sorts of things. And so again, it's a very exciting time to be alive. 
man, you know, it's crazy. It's like, I'm sold. And then I'm still skeptical. Like at the same time, it's like, like you say that and I'm like, no way. But I'm like, yes way. But then I'm like, no way. <laughs> you know, there's, there's actually, there's another, there's another piece and I'd be happy to share the link with you if you, if, um, if uh, so you can share it in the, in the show notes. It's actually a CIA paper that was declassified in 1983. Uh, and in the paper, they actually um, describe the nature of the universe and the way that they describe it, I think is entirely aligned with the spiritual understanding, which is that the universe is simply a matrix of consciousness and it's uh, holographic in nature, which is we are the, the, the part that has been made in the image of the whole. Uh, and so that is why by virtue of exploring our own consciousness, we have indeed access to the whole universe. Um, and so again, it goes into how energy is exchanged uh, between the hologram, the whole and, and the part uh, in some detail and how that's modulated in frequency through our, our minds uh, in order to create the illusion of the separate self and, um, and how that illusion can be reconciled through, of course, exploration of consciousness. Jonathan, what am I doing with my life, man? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I, I do say to clients, you know, because some clients are like, okay, um, you know, they're coming for some anxiety or something like that, right? And they're like, okay, so um, if I go into one of these retreats, am I going to be fixed? And I'm like, look, uh, there's no right and wrong here. You know, there's some people come to one of these experiences, they have this profound experience, they say, I think I've gotten all the messages I need. I'm going to go back to my day job and love my wife and my kids, and everything's great. And that's awesome. And then other clients are back within, you know, we had one client who said, oh my God, first retreat, I've cleared 50 years worth of shit in 10 days. And I'm coming back in two weeks for another retreat because now I want to begin to think out my future. And, uh, you know, he's uh, he was a big tech CEO in San Francisco. He's running three businesses and uh, he immediately got rid of two of his businesses, give up, you know, the 800K a year that was being generated by those two businesses, bought an old sailboat in Hawaii, bought a, bought a, you know, a pretty simple car there in Hawaii, spends his time fixing up his boat and sailing around now in uh, in Hawaii. So he's just on a fundamentally different path in terms of, you know, what gives him joy in everyday life. And I think that's, that's what this is all about. I mean, we're all, not a single one of us is a random permutation of evolution. We have unique gifts and strengths. There are unique things that give us joy. And consciousness is, you know, in its creation of each of us is just trying to endlessly express joy and love and abundance and endless creativity out to the infinite and uh, so for someone to you know wake up in the morning and go throw on a suit as I used to and um, you know sit 16 hours a day under fluorescent lighting and, and crunching their own spine shorter and shorter it's just really not what creation wants from us yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely I agree that's I love these conversations. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And there's not enough people in my world that like talk about it, uh, you know, freely. Um, so I appreciate you. <laughs> Thanks, man. And then, look, I want to I want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, we focused on the positive here. Um, these are very these can be very challenging experiences. You know, I shared that at the at the outset. Um, and this these experiences are not for everyone. You know, people really need to know their own why they need to feel the calling. I really recommend anyone that would consider um, exploring such an experience, they spend a lot of time and energy understanding their own why, first and foremost, also the different medicines that are out there, the different ways in which medicine can be facilitated, uh, because it's a, it's a wild west frontier in this ecosystem, uh, and there's stories of abuse and you know all sorts of bad stuff out there make sure that you know if you're exploring this make sure that you're going through a really high quality medical screening that's also important um, just to make sure that this experience is going to be safe for you and then you know i guess on a fundamental level just make sure that kind of like you and i are connecting now make sure that you're really connecting with the people who are going to be um you know ultimately guiding your experience like not necessarily in ceremony but like you know the energy of the, you know, the, the, the people who are going to be guiding you because you're going to be at the most vulnerable you've, you've ever been in your life. And so you want to be held by great people. Yeah, absolutely. There we go. I appreciate that. Cause I'm definitely not as well versed as you. So I wouldn't have even known to say that. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, if there are one or two people that you can meet right now, it could be a specific person or a type of person that really help you take that next step towards elevating consciousness, both for yourself and for people who come to behold retreats and just the world, who would that person be and how would they help you out? Boy, 
You know, I'm, I'm feel pretty blessed that we have some exceptional healers uh, on our team that are just some of the, I think they're some of the best in terms of what they can do for the things that I care about. Um, so in that sense, I'm, I'm pretty good. I think what would, what I think would really be exciting for me would be to be connected with a few of uh, the world leaders who are ready to do this work, who are ready to really look at what's possible in relation to um, in relation to consciousness and to play a role in shifting uh, the collective consciousness because at the moment you know my belief and my understanding because i identify with this is that we are currently being led um, in the world you know in the business world and it's also the political world by the most traumatized people these are the people who are most disconnected from their inner selves and so they're most requiring external validation and gratification uh, from the outer world and um, I see this now entirely within, you know, the, the corporate world that I was in because they're just that world is just filled with these characters. Uh, and so that's what we're selecting for in terms of those who generally reach the top of corporations. There are exceptions, but in a broad sense, you know, that's uh, that's a lot of what's going on in this world. So, um, you know, I think that for me would be pretty motivating would be to, to work with some some people of very high influence that uh, are ready to do this work and to show them what's possible um, because we have some some really exceptional people who can guide this work well. Yeah, absolutely. There we go. Well, what's the most important one or two things that everyday people can do to really help you? Yeah, I think um, for, for everyone, um, giving primacy to their inner world. You know, I think we're, again, we're, we're living in a time where we can't help but look at the news and just see the absurdity of everything that's playing out. It just, it looks ridiculous. And so I think what we all need to recognize is that, everything is everything on the outside is a function of what's playing out on the inside. So there is actually no problems on the outside. It's just what's happening on the inside. And so once we elevate our consciousness to such a state that we can recognize that we can really detach from all of the, the nonsense that's playing out in the, um, in the lower vibrations, if we may describe it as such. Uh, and so my, my message to people would be, um, to give primacy to their inner world, you know, whether that's through meditation, through breath work, whether you're ready for, um, you know, plant medicine retreat, uh, and just spending some time each day to connect with yourself mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, just so that you can, um, yeah, just find your center. Uh, and by finding your center of balance and um, staying cool, calm, and collected in all situations, you'll begin to inspire others around us. And that's an exponential relationship. And that's what will ultimately allow this exponential rise in consciousness that we're going to be living through uh, to unfold in, in a peaceful and, and loving way. I love that. I love that. Well, now we're going to jump into our thriving three. And our first question is, what's your favorite book, movie, or podcast? Pick one. I'm going to go with um, Dr. David Hawkins, Letting Go. It's an incredible book on uh, consciousness. It has nothing to do with psychedelics or plant medicine. Uh, it does a great job uh, elucidating levels of consciousness. People love this book because it allows us to place uh, ourselves on a scale, which is inherent to the human condition. We love placing ourselves on a scale. Uh, and he does a great job uh, describing how we experience life at each level of consciousness. So by virtue of that description, it's very easy to identify in with your current level of consciousness and also begin to understand what's possible in the higher levels, as well as to gain some signposts from the next levels of consciousness. Uh, so the work that he's done is really profound. It's been thrown out uh, you know, wholesale as uh, pseudoscience, uh, but then you know, so was psychedelics up until recently. And so uh, I think that will begin to unwind as people begin to develop a deeper understanding of consciousness gotcha gotcha yeah you know they call a lot of things pseudoscience until they prove it to be actual science like i mean think about like how many times science has been wrong and then corrected itself just <laughs> i know i know it, it, i absolutely and like and not only that but the things that we now universally collectively hold to be true were heretical in nature, right? Like we used to believe that the, the sun revolved around the earth and the first, you know, 
the yeah the first person to suggest that actually it was the other way around was like let's 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 light this guy on fire right like he can't possibly say that so i think i think that's true for virtually everything that we collectively believe is just completely misguided science itself is um you know the study of division uh, which don't get me wrong it has its it has its uses um but in terms of bringing ourselves together from a health perspective as well as bringing ourselves together um, from a from a spiritual perspective science has very little to grant us in relation to that and so it's the study of unification uh, i believe that is um what you know what a lot of this work represents uh and so we're we're often looking in the wrong direction by creating more molecules in the labs and hoping that that will fix the next uh series of problems you know yeah yeah absolutely absolutely uh well the next question is what's one way you like to care for yourself <laughs> Yeah, so I mentioned meditation before. Um, you know, I've just uh, I've just kind of gotten back into um, uh, into the, some more physical stuff. So I've just started doing some more personal training. Uh, but before that, it was more yoga. Uh, so I, I usually attend yoga three times a week. Um, and again, that's that's really uh, it's been really fundamental for me because you know again it's about unification it's about getting the the same vibration through your mind heart body and spirit and so feeling all of those things come into vibration and and so yoga has a lot to add to that on the physical level yeah absolutely there we go and what is one action step that you can take right now or continue to take if you're already doing it to get connected to a few of the world leaders that are ready to do this work oh i like that um you know, I could probably uh, stop enjoying myself on this little island in Thailand and start uh, actually attending uh, forums where uh, these types of people come together. So that's very much in in my plan. It's just uh, my mom lived, moved over with me eight months ago, so we've been we've been living together, and so uh, yeah, I've been been spending a lot of time with her. Uh, but that's uh, that's on the cards for sure. There we go. A, a good book you might want to read if you want to stay on in Thailand. Um, Who not how by Dan. Oh, no. and yes. Dan I know that book, actually. Um, I follow the work of uh, Benjamin Hardy pretty, uh, pretty closely, who um, speaks endlessly about that book. I don't know if he was the co-author of that book. Um, yeah, it's weird. It was like Dan Sullivan's concept, but he wrote the whole book. He wrote the book. That's that's right. That's right. Yeah, it's a it's such a powerful concept, and uh, because I, I mean it's so true, right? Because here's the thing: I always try to say to to our team, it's like there are things that give you energy, and there are the things that don't give you energy. For the things that don't give you energy, find the people that those things it gives them energy and they're going to be way better at it because it gives them energy. Right. Yep. And so if we, again, if we start to look at these things through an energetic uh, lens, then I think we can, there's just so much more than we can do to help one another. And I think that's part of the transition we're in is like, we're coming out of the paradigm of, Oh, how can I, how can I get things to, how can I give things? Because we all have unique things to give to this world. And it's just a matter of how we can uh, let set them free in the, in the natural world. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I love that. Well, awesome, man. We got one last question for you. So you know how there are people on the planet who have that really fixed mindset. They're not willing to accept help. They're not willing to accept change. You know, that lower vibration. Yeah. And um, sometimes they'll live their whole life like that. Sometimes they'll die like that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, other times they'll make that switch to more of a growth mindset, willing to accept help and willing to accept change. In your opinion, what is the catalyst that causes that change? Yeah, it's usually, in my experience and with our, with our clients, you, I think you usually have to reach a point at which the pain becomes so great that there actually has to be a break, right? Because the universe is, the universe wants us to elevate in our consciousness and is constantly sending us those things that would, if we listened, would help us to recognize some of the next truths that would help us to release the desire for control and all of those egoic things. Yeah. Um, and so I think, you know, whether it's a divorce, whether it's like for me, where my career was no longer giving me any joy, 
whether it's um, you know serious loss of some other sort, whether it's um, financial in its nature, you know it could be any number of things that that kind of triggers people to realize, okay, this is no longer working. I need to make some fundamental shifts in the way that I understand uh, myself and I understand the world. So I think it's you know it's usually of that nature. I I am hopeful that increasingly it's coming more from a place of inspiration uh, rather than a place of requirement um, because that is obviously a pretty painful journey to go on uh, when it's a through requirement versus where it's coming through inspiration so hopefully we can see more uh, more stories of inspiration out there rather than more stories of required transformation yeah yeah absolutely I feel that well awesome Jonathan I think that's all I got for you is there anything else you want to chat about before we sign off no, um, you know, I'd say to um, say to the audience, if uh, if you're up for exploring a journey, come and visit us on beholdretreats.com. Um, we uh, you have to speak to a real human if you're going to do a, a journey with us. So we like to understand whether our clients are a mutual fit and um, and we can explore things from there. There we go. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Timothy. It's been a real pleasure. Of course. And if you guys are listening to this and you love what Jonathan had to say, make sure to go to beholdretreats.com. That link and anything else Jonathan sends me that he wants in the show notes will be in the show notes. I believe we mentioned something, a link to something. I forgot what it was. CIA paper. CIA paper. Yes. Thank you. That will also be in the show notes. And um, yeah, make sure to reach out to Jonathan if you liked what he had to say today. As we always ask, send this podcast to one to three people you know need to hear this message. In fact, for this message, we might want to go five to seven people. Go ahead and shoot it to five to seven people you know need to hear this message. Shoot us a five-star review on iTunes and we're out.